All right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Alex Kim from the Microsoft Edge team. Uh, thanks for joining us today to discuss and learn more about Edge Context. Um, today, uh, the goal of today's meeting is to uh, bring awareness and provide update to our world and uh, get general feedback from the JS framework or browser implementers. Uh, today, I will give a quick intro um, on why we need edit context and then how edit context works. Then I'll give some demos to show current status. So the total presentation probably will last 15 to 20 minutes. And then at the end, we will have an open discussion. Okay, so the background. Um, so there are various advanced text input services um, like shape writing, handwriting, recognition, or IV composition and dictation um, provided by OS. Um, so let me show you some examples. You can find this at the end of our edit context explainer. So this is a uh, shape writing. Uh, you can, where you can uh, input word um, just by one stroke. And then this is a handwriting recognition where you can use pen um, as your text input um, method. And then emoji picker and IME composition, where if you are trying to type languages that have some uh, special characters, then you need to use this to compose um, your text input. So our demo today uh, mostly will involve um, this IME composition. So I wanna show you um, this IME composition in more details. So here um, I can change my input method from English to uh, traditional Chinese. So as I'm typing, I'm not typing ABC later. So this is some phonetic symbols uh, for traditional Chinese. And this uh, phonetic symbols can compose into uh, like one word like this. And when I'm, when I, while I'm doing this composition, I can press left, left to move the carrot, and then I can press down to choose a different word because all these words share the same uh, pronunciation. So I can even choose um, a phrase that can update two words at once or three at once like this. So um, as I finish the composition, I press enter and you can see this uh, underlying decoration will disappear. And at this point, if I uh, press left, press left and press down, uh, I can no longer change the, uh, the word I'm trying to compose uh, because uh, this word as we call it is committed. And also, I want to show you another um, advanced text input. Um, let me switch to English first, uh, which is uh, dictation. So if I press Windows key and H, so this is the demo for dictation. So you can see that briefly, we see this uh, on the line uh, decoration as well. So that means um, this sentence at the time was being composed by the uh, dictation engine. Okay, so now I'll go back to the slide. So um, all these uh, advanced text input services are available for web apps. However, the only way the web app can access it is to place an editable element in DOM and focus it. So the editable element includes input text area or a content editable div. And these three elements uh, have their own uh, capabilities, their own different. However, in general, uh, these are not sufficient. They are not enough for uh, web-based editors. So, uh, this is the current framework. So editors will need to have their own models and they will need to convert their model to HTML and 
use it to update the DOM. So this DOM uh, will also, um, I mean, this editable element will also be responsible to take the text input. For example, take the English typing, like the hello from physical keyboard, or take the uh, Chinese typing like this uh, uh, through IME, or to take the touch or voice text input. And also, uh, it will also be taking the uh, input for text selection to update the carrot and then change the range of the text selection. So this IME here, as you see before, um, we, we can press left, left, right, right, and up and down to choose different words. So this IME will also need to access the view to update the view to show what's going on for the user. So this is where the problem is um, because the text input is tied directly to the down view and the IME will need to access the view. And at the same time, editor will also need to update the view. So um, these two uh, will have, sometimes will have conflict um, situation, which could be a very tricky for the um, editors to implement uh, their editing uh, experiences. Um, so currently there are three approaches um, the editors trying to use to work with a current architecture. So one is that um, we want to uh, directly use the editable element and incorporate that into our view. And the second is that um, we want to completely hide it. So in the view, you will not see that editable element. Um, the third one is the hybrid, hybrid mode, where you sometimes show the editable element and sometimes you hide it. So, so basically the editors are forced to choose uh, between these two. They either show this, let this to update the view or let the model to update the view. You have to choose from either of them. Either of them. So today I'm gonna show you three examples. So, um, so one for each approach and all of them will have some side effects. So the first one is word online. Um, the word online is um, using the editable element in the view. So here in word online, this whole canvas is a content editable div. So here you see the carrot, the underlying decoration. These are all native, native uh, carrot, native decoration. And the problem of this is that uh, when the composition uh, is trying to update the view, uh, Word Online would not be able to update the view, which causes problem for the concurrent composition. Uh, so let's see some video of that. All right, so, so this is Word Online and um, these are two users updating the document at the same time on two different devices using Word Online. So you can see on the right, the user is typing and the documents are in sync. Um, but if user on the lab now trying to type Chinese, now it's in active conversation. So B, when B is typing the sync no longer working. Right. So the reason for this is that um, when uh, composition is active, the composition will need the, 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 the view remain unchanged. So if, if at this point, Word Online is trying to update the view with the new text input from user B, then the internal state will be messed up and the user will be very confused. So this is uh, an example of what would happen if we update the view while we have an active conversation. 
So we have an active composition. And now the user B is trying to type. And notice that right now the underlying declaration is gone, which means that, that some state is messed up. And now if user A trying to continue the conversation, conversation, then we see that we have this uh, duplicate uh, text. Uh, I probably click, let me, yeah, we have this duplicated text. So this is the side effect of the approach one. Now let's see the, the second approach. The second approach is to totally hide the editable element. So which is uh, how Google Docs uh, work with the current uh, framework. So in Google Docs, you see that we have this iframe, like a very tiny iframe, one pixel tall. So inside this iframe, we have a, an a editable element. I think which is the uh, content editable div. And if you are typing English, it's just one pixel tall. If you are typing like Chinese, then it's become bigger. Uh, but you are still not able to see the, the edit editable element. And the problem for this uh, is that, um, first of all, uh, because it completely hide the, hide the editable element, so it has to uh, like render this uh, their, by their own. So this will be a custom rendering. So as you can see in Japanese, sometimes you can have different style for your underlying decoration. You can have solid line and a dotted line. So for the user of Google Docs, they cannot see this difference. And also you will have uh, some position issues and then the carry issues, which is what I'm going to demo now. So if I type some Chinese, um, when I, first of all, when I press left, 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 I already pressed three times of left, but you cannot see the carry is moving. And this is a pretty big issue. And now if I press down, you see, I'm trying to change the word for the second, for the second word. But right now my candidate window is not um, close to the carry where it's supposed to be. So this, this candidate window should be, is supposed to be here. And you see if I update it to this word, now I'm, up, I'm updating this. And I can press end and to update this and press enter. So this is the issue uh, for the approach to, uh, because it, they completely hide it. So sometimes it will be some unexpected bug and that would be a very confuse, confusing to the users. And the third approach is the hybrid one. Uh, this is for Visual Studio Code and um, or a Monaco editor. So the hybrid one is that when you type English, uh, we are using the one by one pixel text area. And but if you are typing uh, Chinese, this text area uh, will expand uh, to to uh, just contain this the word you are typing. So um, you can see that here this. Uh, is a native decoration and there will be a native carrot inside. So the carry manipulation will be kind of tricky. So let's see. So this is the monocle editor. So they have this special feature where you can uh, have multiple uh, carrot position. Like I press alt click, alt click, and I can type English like in three places at the same time. And then I can move the carrot, I can delete, it's all working fine. However, if I type Chinese and I press left, now I'm seeing the fourth carrot because this one is the, uh, the native one. And these three are the uh, custom rendering from the Marco editor. And this is the issue of the pro approach three.
And they also have the accessibility issue, uh, but I'm not, uh, I will not uh, demo it right now. And then if you are interested, you can uh, see the explainer for more details. Uh, okay, so uh, we have all these issues and how do we address it? So right now we are uh, proposing uh, the, the new architecture uh, because the main issue is that the text input is tightly coupled with the with the down view. So this new architect in this new architecture, we decouple this text input from the down. So we have this new uh, component. You can call it text input view or text input basing view. Basically, right now your model will have two views. Uh, one view is a user facing view where the user can see what's going on. And then the second view is for IME and for the input for text input. So um, when user have input through IME, and this new component will hold the state for the for the IME. And the editors right now will be free to update the user facing view. Uh, however, or whenever they want. And uh, this is some details. So when the input uh, goes to the edit context, edit context will use the text update events um, to update um, the new text to the model. And also it will use the text format update event to update uh, for the information for the, for the style of the underlying decoration. So that models, editor model will need to know how to render those uh, decoration. Now let's uh, move on to the demos. Okay, and so we will have a four demos. And uh, the first one we will have some uh, code samples. So the first one, the trivial model, um, here we have this div uh, with uh, content editable folds. So basically it's just a read only div right now, you can see here. Uh, it's false and then we have some style. So right now if you click it and then you press ABC, nothing is happening. Uh, because it's read only. Uh, but now, uh, if you create an edit context and then you use uh, this API, attach edit context to associate the edit context with the with the with the div, and then save. And let's refresh it. Now you can put a carrot in the div. It becomes an editable element. And if you press A, uh, you can see that also oh, this is the event that is uh, received by edit context or this, uh, this div. So you can see that right now, uh, the, the div is receiving um, some key up, key down, key press event. And the edit context is receiving this text update event. So this, uh, this uh, information is maintained in the edit context and the view uh, remains unchanged because remember that in our previous uh, architecture, right now the text input is going through the, um, the, uh, the text input facing view is not going through the, the user facing view. So right now the user facing view will not be updated so I can continue to type ABC, ABC, or I can continue to type uh, Chinese. Okay, so now the, uh, this edit context, edit context buffer will be available for the model. And then the model can just uh, update, uh, use it at a however and whenever it want. So, one, one, one way they can use it, or I mean, most cases, the model will use the, um, 
any context buffer to update their view. So let's see some examples. So let's uncom let's uncomment this update view. Okay, save. So this update view, uh, this is what I mean by a trivial model. So uh, in this example, we are just taking the text from content uh, from edit context buffer and assign this text uh, to in the HTML. Basically, we just use their uh, text as raw buffer as our model. So now as we uncomment it and then let's refresh. Now when I uh, when I press A, oh let's switch back to English. When I press A, V, C, uh, you see that our edit context buffer has ABC and our view will also have ABC. And I can also type uh, Chinese. And I can press left, left to move and I can press down to select different word. And notice that when I press left and right, um, this curly bracket is also updated. Uh, edit context uh, uh, will have uh, information for the text buffer and also having information for the selection. Um, so you see that when I press left, this will move to the corresponding position and it will also move to the corresponding position. So that means edit context and then the view are in sync. So this is very important. Um, the, the two views we have, uh, the user facing view and then the, um, the text input facing view, um, the information will need to sync. And um, some of them, the browser will do for you. And some of them will need the uh, editors to help with. Um, okay, Let, let's show uh, more examples. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to show you if I continue to type to uh, have a new line. Um, so if right now I press up to move the carrot, uh, we can do that. Uh, we can do that, with, uh, no problem. And this was uh, one of the uh, blocking issues mentioned by developers, uh, where they say that uh, the carry navigation uh, is tricky for edit context um, because edit context didn't have a way um, to access the layout. And it's basically just a, a plain buffer. So how do edit context it can't just know where to um, move the carrot. Uh, because, but because here we are using the native uh, native uh, selection. So when user are uh, uh, interacting with the user facing view, uh, we will also get the selection, selection changing event. So the selection changing event will give you give the the model the information of the carrot in the current uh, user facing view so the JS model will need to find a mapping uh, between uh, the user facing view and the text input view and because right now i'm using the trivial model so i can just uh, pretty easily get the offset from the anchor and the focus element. And then I will call this edit context update selection to, to update the, the carry position. So this is how we can um, uh, achieve the, the carry navigation with the edit context. And there's another demo um, for this um, new behavior, let's see. Here, uh, this is another thing I want to demo. So this is the before input. 
now I can press a backspace backspace to delete the, the characters. Um, but if I uh, uncomment this, I call it prevent default. Now, when I pray, when I pray backspace, I cannot delete anymore because the event is prevented. And uh, and also, you can see this uh, squiggle here. So this is for uh, spell checking. So this is also one of another uh, blocking issues uh, mentioned by uh, developers. Um, and because here we are using um, the uh, the user facing view, and so when I press this, right click this, and and I press this uh, uppercase ABC, I will get this event insert replacement text, and I can get information from this event, and then use that to uh, call update text for edit context, and now you can see that our edit context buffer are in sync with uh, our, our down view. Okay, so this is um, the first demo of the tribute model. And let's see the second one, the Marty's curse editing. Now, uh, as you remember that, um, in Monaco, when you type Chinese, and in this multi-cursor uh, scenario, you cannot move left, left, right, right. But now we can do that. Uh, the carry can move at the same time. And I can also choose different word and commit. All right, the, so the third one is the cross-boundary composition. So before I show that, I wanna show you this. So this is the native words. So native words, um, they have this uh, two page layout. So I can do um, dictation here. And you can see that the dictation can go cross the boundary to the second page. So this is a demo for cross boundary com uh, dictation. Yeah, so you can see that the uh, let me. Okay. You can see that the underline is crossing the boundary, um, but um, you cannot see this uh, in the word online. So this is the word online where they don't provide the two page two page view, and one of the reason is that uh, they just cannot do it because. Two pages will be will mean two divs, and then if you want to do some conversation across the boundary, close to the boundary, it will be pretty tricky. Um, okay, so now I'll go back to my demo. Now I can use uh, press window key H. So this is a demo for cross boundary dictation. So now you can see that, oh, you can see that uh, the uh, decoration is crossing the boundary. All right, so now let's see the last demo. The last demo is the, uh, the collaboration demo. So see the user A is typing Chinese. And now the user B, while user B is typing, uh, we can still see that it's syncing to the, the other document. All right. So, um, summary. So, edit context um, can decou decouple text input from down view, which can unblock a lot of uh, sophisticated uh, editing scenarios. And our progress from last year 
uh, is we support English typing and then uh, we introduce this uh, attached edit context API so that we can create the uh, association uh, between the DOM and the edit context or the association between the um, user facing view and um, the user input facing view, the text input facing view. Um, so that uh, enables uh, a lot of stuff like before input events, uh, carry navigation and spell check that I just demoed before. All right, so that's a wrap um, for my presentation. So now we are open for uh, questions or any topics you wanna discuss.